We have looked at many different mod kits over the years, including this one. Seriously, I've already made a tutorial on this kit before. This one just isn't laminated. That is the only difference. So I won't be reviewing this kit like I normally do because one, you could just watch my last tutorial on the laminated version and I don't really need to repeat myself. But also two, next week, I'll be comparing all the IPS kits in a head-to-head -head battle to see which is the best. All I'm gonna say is if you're wanting to use an original shell and don't wanna trim or solder anything, this kit is the way to go. And you can grab this kit from RGRS or Z Labs and use code Jake to save some money. The rest I'll save for my comparison video next week, but today, I'm gonna teach you how to install this right now. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six tri-wing screws. But once you have those unscrewed, don't rip it off just yet, it being the back, because there's one more Phillips crosshead JIS. They're all across, just un un undo it. And then you can yeet this back on off of there. Most of you are watching this to reuse your shell. In this case, I am not reusing the shell. I have a different original shell that I wanna use because it's a lot cleaner than this one. <laughs> but we have one, two more Phillips head screws. Sometimes you'll have a third one right over here. And before you rip the motherboard out of here, we're gonna pop these two tabs up like that and that. They should look like this. And then you should be able to lift your motherboard out. Might be a little stuck in there. And then the ribbon cable will just fall out. If the ribbon cable does not come out easy, do not force it out. Your clips just probably aren't up all the way. Then now's the time to clean your board if you haven't done that. I like to use 99% isopropyl alcohol. Also, when you're cleaning, make sure you get in the cart slot. It gets pretty dirty in there too. And that way you don't have to go <laughs> to get your game to work. If we do it now, everything should be dry by the time we put it back together. And if you want extra credit, you can clean your power switch. Now that that is all cleaned up, I'm gonna shake all these buttons off. You could probably leave the face buttons in and it should be fine. But either way, I need to show you how to remove the screen. Take your Game Boy like this, and like Kesha's first kiss, you wanna twist and twist very lightly until you can get one of those corners to raise up. And then you can stick your finger under there and pull her back up. Now, I guess you could leave this insulating tape here. It's probably not very sticky anymore, so I just remove it. And you probably have some foam left over on the bottom edge here. If you want to clean that up, you can, but it's not necessary. And from here, I definitely recommend deep cleaning your shell. Here's some old footage of me using hot soapy water to clean a different shell. Just soak it in some regular water, get some dish soap, let it sit for like a couple hours, scrub it with a toothbrush, dry it off, probably come back the next day because water's not gonna dry as fast as IPA will, and then come back here and see my lovely face. Here is the shell that I'm going to use. It's all nice and clean. The screen lens is okay, but I'm probably gonna end up replacing it by the end of this. You can either push it out with your fingers now, or at the end of this video, I'll show you how to remove it without having to open up the entire Game Boy, in case you change your mind later or you get a big old scratch in it down the road. But for now, we're gonna leave it like this. We have a lot of stuff in here. First things first is we're gonna test this. We're gonna take our screen and this board. We're gonna flip up this brown latch and we're gonna stick the screen in like that and then lock that brown tab back down. Here's where you'll find whether or not your Game Boy is a 40 pin or a 32 pin. Mine is the 40 pin as designated by this little 40 here. So we're gonna take the fatter of the two ribbon cables and put the other one off to the side. We don't need it. The fatter end will go in here and then we can lock those tabs down. This one you'll have the gold shiny pins up like this. And this one we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna have the black part facing up. And just like the brown clip here, we're gonna lift the black clip up and we're gonna slide that ribbon cable in and lock it back down. Now we're gonna take our back half and we're gonna slide the motherboard into it. We're gonna take off our battery cover. We're gonna put the batteries in and then we can flip the power switch on and see that our Game Boy works and the screen, more importantly, the screen. We can turn it back off and we did it right. We're good, we're chilling like a villain. Take the batteries out, take the motherboard out very carefully, careful of the screen. And I'm gonna undo this latch here to separate these back into those two parts. I'm gonna put the motherboard off to the side and we're gonna flip the screen over like so. We're gonna take our insulating film and peel this off and stick it down onto the back of the screen. This is just gonna keep these two things from shorting and then we can flip it back over. 
And here is where our crossroads begin. I'm gonna solder. This does not require soldering. That's what these two touch pads are for. One of them is for color, the other is for brightness. If you want to remove any of them, you can just snip them off. I prefer to desolder them. If you're gonna leave this as is, skip to this point right here. If not, grab your soldering irons, turn it on. I set mine to 300 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna take my tweezers and grab this, heat it up and pull away. It's that simple. It's so easy. That easy, too easy. Then from here, we're going to add some solder points to L, R, and select. Ground and AV, you do not have to worry about it at all. I'm going to add some flux to these three points. I'm gonna push the solder into my iron and then lift up. But we can take our wires and add them to each of those three soldering points. If you wanna grab a Sharpie or something, put a little marking on those wires so you can tell the difference. Might wanna do that now. I'm not going to, but I know that helps some people. I'm going to bring our motherboard back over. Now I'm gonna go over to TP2 on the motherboard, add a little bit of solder, and then solder the select wire to TP2. And for now, I'm gonna set that off to the side and be done with it. Welcome back, my solderless friends. We're gonna plug this ribbon cable back in just like I showed you before and lock it down. We're gonna fold the screen in like that. I'm gonna orient it all like this. For those who are soldering, grab your L and R wires and make sure they're on the right sides. Then you can take this other piece of insulating film that is not labeled, and we can cover up this board here. This will prevent anything from this board shorting to the main GBA board. We can grab our shell again, lift all of this up, set this down. We're gonna peel the red side of this double-sided foam tape, maybe. I'm gonna start with peeling the white side of this tape, and we're gonna place it down as best we can in the center of all of this. So all we should see is white or red if you manage to get the red peel off. This will be a lot easier when you don't have the screen lens applied already. If not, you'll have to peel it up and rip it back out the way we put it in. Try again to peel the red part. There we go. Then we can take this piece of double-sided tape, this one straight white line, peel it and stick it down here. Then we can peel the other side of this one off too. Now there should be two acrylic spacers in your kit, a fat piece and a skinny piece. You can peel the acrylic off if you want, but we're not gonna see it on the screen lens, so I don't care. And you can place the big one down here, and then we can place the skinny one on this far edge over here like this. If you're worried about ripping the ribbon cable, you can disconnect this ribbon cable. I'm gonna peel this protective film off. You're gonna wanna have it in the orientation like this, my apologies. Then we can stick the screen all the way up against that left border and all the way up against the bottom border. These two brown pieces, the acrylic pieces are guides. So we should hopefully have everything as straight as possible. And instead of the normal foam that goes in here, it's just that thin piece of insulating film. If you disconnected this ribbon cable, you can reconnect it now. And for those who are keeping the touch pads, I recommend putting them here and here. But honestly, you can put them wherever you want. I don't really care. But either way, we can take our buttons and put them back in if you haven't already. I leave L and R, the side pieces and the power switch off to the side because we don't wanna put that into like the last step. And this side piece goes over here and this one goes over here. Then we can take our motherboard and flop it down over here and press it all down like so. If you're having a hard time getting it flush, pick it up and then it should be a lot easier. You're probably gonna also be held up by the speaker. If you are soldering, your two wires should be sticking out about here. Make sure nothing is pinched. Then we're gonna take our crosshead screws and screw this down. Again, you might have three instead of two. Mine only had two. And for the soldering folks, we can take our last two wires and solder them down. Hopefully you have each wire on the correct side. Then we can literally just heat up this pin here and stick our wire in. It is the second pin from the left, and it is the exact same on both sides. So it's not mirrored. So do the second pin from the left, and then you should be good to go. To keep the wires neat and tidy, these are the things I like to do. For this one on the right, I typically will wrap it around these two capacitors. In this case, we can only wrap it around one. And then for this side, I like to stick the wire underneath the cart slot and in between the link port and the ribbon cable connector. And then make sure the wire isn't going over any of these holes. Then we can put the rest of our plastic pieces in and our power switch. Then we can take our back half and slap that down. Then we can take our black Phillips head screw, screw it down in the bottom, and then screw down the rest of our six tri-wing screws. 
Carrying on, we're good. And if you are like me and you don't want the original scratched up lens, here's how you remove it after you've done everything. I'm going to take one of these suction cups, stick it down. And since this is plastic and our old one, the glue's not gonna be very good. So it should come off pretty easily. I lied. Wow, okay. Normally this comes off super easy. There we go. There we go. Like a dream, easy breezy, beautiful cover girl. I'm gonna do that with the canned air, get rid of any dust that's lying on top. And I'm gonna take our new screen lens that came with the kit. I'm gonna peel the edges first, and then I'm gonna peel up just one half of that inner part. And then I'm gonna do this pinching technique that'll make it so you don't get any fingerprints or any of the goo smudge all over the clear part of the screen lens, and then drop our screen lens into place. And then we can turn it on, see if we're satisfied with that. It looks like on this screen lens, it kind of shows the edge a little more over here. That one looks so much better. Yeah, this one I like a lot more. This was so easy, it was so fast. I love this kit. You can adjust the brightness by holding select and pressing L to lower and R to raise the brightness. Or you can press all three to open up the menu and fart around with the settings. L, R, and select will help you navigate that menu. And of course, if you didn't solder, this touchpad will adjust the brightness and this touchpad will adjust the color palettes. Like I said, this is identical to the laminated version. Did you even notice that I swapped the two for the menu tutorial? Let me know if you did or didn't notice in those comments down below. Also, what do you think of this kit? I like it a lot. And if you do too, maybe you could hit that like and subscribe button for me. I'm almost at 60K. So like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later, guys. Thanks for playing.